Last weekend, I went to this knitting event. It was like a fair, I guess. And I want to do a little haul. It's, it's tiny. I was very good. Only bought two things. Some very, very cute stitch markers. Because I had those pretty stitch markers, you know, the ones with the green stones. But those are non-detachable. And sometimes you need the type of stitch marker that you can take in and out of a project. And I didn't have those yet. I got myself these really adorable handmade autumnal mushroom stitch markers and they are so beautiful <laughs> and the lady who was selling them was so lovely very glad to have those now and i also got myself some yarn so a while back a friend gifted flores these shoes i guess <laughs> slippers <laughs> adorable little baby slippers in the most beautiful yarn it's this mustardy yellow i believe she called it sunflower colors i really wanted to make it a little set and just to have a little outdoor set i guess for him so i thought how cute would it be if i use the same or a similar yarn for that little gnome hat that i was planning to make that i shared in a, like a few videos back this yarn it's a beautiful hand dyed merino wool i didn't bring the slippers which i should have done but i didn't bring them but off of the top of my head i felt like this would be a pretty good match and it actually is it's a bit more saturated but i think this should be fine. So I got this to make the little gnome hat out of and I bought two because I looked up how much yarn I would need for the hat but I think I'm not going to need nearly as much yarn for I don't know I think something went wrong there. So I bought two skeins which is gonna be way too much. It really does whip up really quick. I mean, a few of you have made that pattern and told me it was really quick to make um, which it is indeed. So I already have quite a bit going um, and still a huge amount left. So what I'm actually gonna do, friends of ours just had their baby and uh, I'm gonna use this yarn to make a little sweater for him. So that's gonna be really really cute. But first, Flores' hat. I hope to finish that by the end of this week. I feel like he needs to wear this in autumn. This is such an autumnal little outfit and I would love if I have enough yarn left to make him some mittens as well. Anyway, I was able to cast this on or I thought it would be a nice you know, point to cast this on because I actually finished the body of my wrap cardigan. That looks like this. Let me actually try it on for you. So this is what it's currently looking like. I think the fit is wonderful. It's a little on the short side, but I think it'll block out a bit, you know, a bit longer in any case. Okay, I decided to stop here. I think it looks amazing. I love this material. So I put that project on hold to make the hat because it's already getting quite cold outside and I've had um, Flores in a hat a few times already so I would love to just you know have him wear this one and speaking of blocking that's another thing I would very much like to do at some point this week is to block that pink cardigan that I made a while back because I still haven't gotten to it and it'll be the first thing I ever do block actually because I don't think I blocked that sweater that I made last year I'm gonna uh, see how that works <laughs> and do that at some point this week this is by far the most expensive yarn I've ever used. Oh my gosh. But yeah, hand dyed and it's beautiful. So it's worth it. sewing studio because I'm about to try something completely new to me. Today I'm gonna be quilting. I feel like this has been a long time coming but it's time for me to dip my toe into quilting. I'm gonna be using this box by Mrs. Quilty and I'm really excited to have them as the sponsor of this video. Mrs. Quilty is the go-to quilting subscription box. Each box comes with a few projects that are kind of mapped out for you in different skill levels. So, you know, beginner quilters and more advanced quilters can all enjoy the box. So let's take a look at what's inside. This is the first kind of introduction box that I have here and it features, let's see, a stack of quilting fabric and these are 12 exclusive designs that you can't find anywhere else and the theme of this box is kitchen comforts so they are all blue and white with kind of 
pops of red, kind of traditional kitchen style. Then there are some quilting supplies that it comes with. And since this is the first box, it comes with a few basics that you really need to get started with quilting. So it contains this quilting ruler and then a wheel of fine straight pins to use with your projects. And then it has the Mrs. Quilty magazine, which features all the projects for that box, uh, as well as loads of tips. This one even has a cookie recipe in the end, which is adorable. But yeah, there are really detailed instructions on four different projects in this one. And the magazine comes with projects, but you can, of course, use the fabrics however you wish if you have a different project in mind. If any questions come up during any part of the quilting process, Mrs. Quilty has a dedicated support team ready to help you out. And there is also an online community of fellow Mrs. Quilty quilters that you can turn to with questions, but also to share your finished products and see what others have made with their boxes. Around holidays and seasons they have special themed and seasonal boxes which is really fun and exciting. When you subscribe to Mrs. Quilty you will receive a new box every month but if you need a bit of a break or you want to pace your projects a little bit then it's really easy to pause or cancel anytime without hassle. Now if this sounds like something you would enjoy there is a link in my description box that takes you straight to the website where you can subscribe to the Mrs. Quilty box. I also do have a little discount code that you can use so be sure to take advantage of that. I just think this is so much fun and such a wonderful way to add a little bit of creativity to your life every month. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on one of the projects that is in the magazine this month. Specifically, I'm gonna be making this pot holder. This is a beginner level quilt, which is perfect for me because I am very much a beginner. <laughs> it looks really cute and this is something I can use because pots of tea everywhere around the house. We need pot holders. Let's get started. A pot holder. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This was so much fun to make. I feel like quilting is a really good exercise for me because it is all about precision and that is the one thing in sewing that I'm... I, I tend to be a little lazy and cut corners and yeah precision is just not my strong suit and you can't get away with that in quilting. So yeah this is a wonderful way for me to practice my precision and I actually really like how this came out. It's so cute. So I'm gonna take this into the kitchen and we can use it underneath our teapot. Love it. I 
I want to go ahead and block this cardigan. So I thought I would put it on one more time just to see what the adjustments are that I want to make and what shape I want to block it in. I definitely want to lengthen the sleeve by maybe five centimeters. So they hit just above my wrist. I think it would be nice if they come kind of over my hand almost. I want to lengthen the whole thing in general, just a few centimeters. I want to make sure that the button band on the bottom here <laughs> looks a little bit nicer. So I want to kind of straighten that out. But that's pretty much it, honestly. I don't think I need to widen it very much. In fact, I think I shouldn't widen it too much because I like that it's more form-fitting and I like the... Uh, fit of the sleeves and everything as well. So I think I'm just gonna focus on kind of lengthening it and making the ribbing look a bit nicer, more uniform. Okay, let me prepare a nice warm bath for this cardigan and we can do it. I'm kind of nervous. I've never done it before and I know that you can completely ruin <laughs> mid work by um, doing this wrong. So fingers crossed for me, but I'm sure I can do it. Let's go. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I was this nervous. <laughs> I have uh, my son's playmat here that I'm gonna use to block this. Oh my gosh. Whew. Let's transfer it carefully. I just realized I've completely stopped talking. Sorry. <laughs> I just don't really know what I'm doing, if I'm completely honest. And it's nerve wracking. I think I'm gonna go ahead, grab a measuring tape, because I'm not sure if maybe the sleeves have already stretched out. I'm worried that I will either put this on when it's dried and find out that I have done nothing or that it has already tripled in size and I just don't know. I really should have measured it before, before I started doing this. I am very worried, but we'll see how this dries up. I will check back in <laughs> to let you know how it goes. I really hope if, if this doesn't, didn't go as I hoped, then I hope that I did too little and I could just do it again. Here we have it. <laughs> it took two days to dry, um, but it's done. And the difference is subtle. So I definitely could have done more, but I was also right in assuming something was already happening before I even started <laughs> stretching it out. Anyways, I'm very happy with the way it came out. The sleeves are now the perfect length, I think. Hit me just on the hand, which is exactly what I wanted. I was able to straighten out the button band a little bit. So that looks a lot more neatly finished now. And the whole thing has just relaxed a little bit, which is what I hoped for. It's also just a tiny, tiny bit longer now. Um, and yeah, all in all, 
I'm very happy with it. Glad I did it. And it was a very interesting experiment. First time blocking the sweater. So next time I know I can, you know, go a bit further with this if necessary. So that is that. And I also finished the little gnome hat. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> this is it. It is really, really cute, but you should see this on the baby. Makes me want to scream. It's so cute. It's the cutest thing I have ever seen in my life. So needless to say, I ordered him a coat <laughs> to go with this outfit. His little face goes here and it's just, it's all chubby cheeks and cuteness and it's absolutely adorable. Fits him perfectly um, with a little bit of room to grow even. It's nice and stretchy. So yeah, this should last for a little while, at least for the entire season. And I just, oh, I love it so much. I love how it came out. And I do have a load of that yarn still left. So I'm definitely gonna make the sweater for our friend's baby. And there might even be enough to make another sweater for Flores as well, or a hat maybe for our friend's baby, because I'm fairly sure they would love this as well. But yeah, this was a really fun project to make, really easy, really quick to whip up. So that is where I will leave you for this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you again next week. <laughs>